It has been almost 50 years since William Baker was hung for a crime he did not commit. And old grudges die hard in this lawless town. For the last half century, dozens of lives have been lost as the families of Clay County have aligned themselves on either side of this bitter feud. Kentucky was an extremely tough place back in those days. An extremely tough place. Baker men took their sons away for their safety because they really didn't shoot to kill. They shot to live. Minister John J. Dickey records the relentless killing in his diary. Violence and blood mark the population of Kentucky today. Her sons go armed and they do not carry these arms for ornaments, but for use. The county court is also overwhelmed by the violence, although only a small number of cases are ever brought to trial. If you had to score, you settled by guns and, uh, and by killing, really. It's, that's how you settled your scores back then. The 1890s are among the bloodiest years, as a new generation inherits the feuding legacy from those who came before. Still backed by the Whites and the Garretts, the Bakers and Howards are about to go head to head. Tom Baker, the strong arm of the Baker clan, sits quietly on his porch when suddenly a bullet flies past his head. Bullet lodged in the door jam right behind him. He jumped up, grabbed his own rifle, and scanned the woods, but saw no one. He went into his house and said to his wife, Emily, the Howards are out to kill me. Once again, a murderous tit for tat is on the way. This time, the catalyst is money. The day before the attempt on his life, Tom Baker exchanges heated words with the leader of the Howard clan, Bal Howard. Tom Baker approached Bal Howard, and he had several of his men behind him, and he said to Bal, I'd, I'd like that $15 you owe me. Bal said, I don't owe you nothing. You cut off 300 more logs off of my property than you were supposed to. You pay me for those 300 trees, I'll pay you your $15. Somebody called somebody a liar. <clears throat> Very serious charge. With tensions running high, name calling quickly escalates into violence. Al Howard swung a PV hook, a log rolling hook at Tom Baker, missed him. And Tom hit him with a pistol. Everybody piled in. It got to be quite a fist fight. Surrounded by their kinsmen, both men back off. Everyone goes home alive. But Tom Baker is furious. He refuses to stand by and let the Howards kill him and his family. Just as the Whites did a generation ago. He begins to make plans for an ambush. His son, suspecting what was in the, lay down in the bed and said he felt bad. His mother said to him, get up from there, you sorry thing, go with your daddy, hand him his rifle. He went on with his daddy. Meanwhile, Bal Howard's son, Jim, hears about the potentially deadly standoff. Fearing the worst, he takes control of the situation. He had gone down to the, around down the courthouse hall to the office of Baldy George Baker, who was at that time the patriarch of the Baker clan. And he said, let's, let's get this thing arbitrated before bloodshed erupts. The two men shake hands in a solemn promise to stop the deadly conflict from erupting. Unfortunately, they didn't send anybody out immediately to Cream Creek to tell both sides we've reached a truce. A fatal error. Back on Crane Creek, Tom Baker and his men are in position, their sights set on the Howards. 
Tom Baker and his group went up Crane Creek on a brushy bluff overlooking the road. Within seconds, the Howards are caught in a hailstorm of bullets. Wilson was shot at least four times. Bal Howard was shot through the chest, but his horse reared and bolted back down the road, which saved his life. Bal Howard is wounded, but alive. The other two men in his posse are not so lucky. Within hours, word of the deadly ambush travels back to town and to Jim Howard. Jim was furious. And he was furious at Baldy George because he thought that he had violated their gentleman's agreement and probably helped in arranging the murders. Believing his family is dead, Jim feels like an accomplice to the murder of his own father. Jim quickly loads his rifle, mounts his horse, and sets off into enemy territory to retrieve the bodies of his loved ones. He got as far as Collins Creek and people started shooting at him. So he retreated and started up Laurel Creek and they shot at him again. He was so mad his eyes sparkled, he looked crazy. As Jim Howard contemplates his next move, who should ride up but Baldy George Baker himself? Trembling with anger, Jim draws his rifle. Baldy George draws his in response. I think he thought he was defending himself for several reasons. He thought Baldy George was implicit in the murders. Whatever they felt, whatever they suspected, they knew one thing for sure, that they could not afford to take a first hit from the other man. Whether Baldy George is in on the Howard murders or not, no one knows. But on that fateful day, it does not matter. Both men were armed. Both men went after their rifles. And Jim Howard shot George Becker in the midsection. He went down, mortally wounded, with one shot. Jim Howard immediately turns himself in to Clay County Sheriff, family friend, Will White. There were so many eyewitnesses to this shooting that he was going to be accountable to the law. And he was quite friendly with the whites. To no one's surprise, Jim does not spend a single night in jail free and clear because the whites had so much influence in politics that I mean they could just do whatever they wanted to. With his father dead, Tom Baker now has his sights set on revenge. Will was talking to another fellow in the courthouse after the shooting of Baldy George. He said, well, I guess old Baldy George is roasting in hell now. This was an insult. Infuriated Tom again, so he was glad to kill Will. Just three days after his father is buried, Tom Baker encounters an unsuspecting Sheriff Will White. Will had left his house and gone down down the creek to, to get some seed corn and uh, met Tom Baker. This time, it is a Baker who pulls the trigger first. Back home and safely surrounded by his family, Tom refuses to turn himself in. They sent word to Tom Baker to come in. They weren't about to go up Creed Creek and try to take ground. <clears throat> Tom had nine sons. One of his brothers had 13. They had enough men there to hold off a pretty good army. It is a standoff. The Howards and Whites are desperate for revenge, but it is suicide to storm the Baker family home. Meanwhile, 
The Bakers and the Garretts still demand retribution for the killing of Baldy George. In just one week, four men have died. And it seems there is no end in sight as the Bakers square off with the Whites for their biggest fight yet. watching Clay County War here on the History Channel. You're watching Clay County War here on the History Channel. June 1899. Tom Baker walks into town with a posse of men. Wanted for the murder of Sheriff Will White, he agrees to surrender, but only under a few conditions. Tom sent back word he would come in, but he wanted assurance, first of all, he wouldn't put, be put in that rat hole of a jail. The second, he wouldn't be asked to eat jail food, and that he wanted his own tent there. And they said, okay. Tom and his men are immediately asked to surrender their weapons. Tom turned to his men and said, all right, now any of you who think you ought to go home or need a home, go now. Don't go out on the streets. Stay clear of the Howard. Watch out for Big Jim. Now the rest of you can come on in the courthouse if you want to. With word of the feud spreading throughout the United States, the state of Kentucky is eager to stop the killing. More than 100 state troopers move into Clay County to safeguard Tom Baker. They set up their tents on the courthouse while and posted guards and all of them stood around. Tom Baker puts on a brave face, but he is no fool. His family has endured the tipped scales of justice before. To make matters worse, he is standing trial for the murder of a member of the White family. Having noticed that the courtroom was packed with bakers, the judge uh, had issued an order clearing the court. And the trial began. Inside the courtroom, the Garrett's lawyer makes a passionate plea for a change in venue. After all, what baker can get a fair trial in a white court? The whites, of course, disagree. But realizing that Clay County could erupt into an all-out war zone if Tom Baker is found guilty, the judge rules that the case be moved to neutral territory. After a round of congratulations, Tom rests at the entryway of his tent with his wife, Emily, who is nine months pregnant with their son. The photographer came up and rather obsequiously asked, would it be all right if we took your picture? Tom said, I guess so. This photo will be a lasting memento of Tom's final moments. Suddenly a shot rang out. And with a little groan, Tom Baker fell across Emily's feet. And he was dead. square is thrown into chaos and all attention is focused on the new town sheriff yet another member of the white family the troopers storm the sheriff's house the killer is gone but inside they find a single rifle its barrel still warm and by the window is the sheriff's hat the troopers immediately confront the sheriff that shot came from your house, and he said, before God, I didn't kill him, I wasn't there. Well, who did? He said, goodness knows, a lot of people have access to my house. If Sheriff White did not do the deed, there is only one other man who they think could have done it, Jim Howard. Unfortunately, 